Hi, I'm Mark Nickerson. Welcome to East Line's Issues and Answers. The purpose of this show is to bring current events, current subjects, and debated issues to the table. We'll talk to department heads, town leaders, volunteers from a variety of town organizations to help understand what is happening in our community, why it happens, and the challenges and choices that need to be made. It's a privilege and honor to work as your first selectman here in East Lyme. We've made, we have an amazing town with amazing natural and man-made resources, and it's filled with wonderful, caring people who share and share the, who raise their families right, look out for one another, and who support each other. I truly believe this. Our, employ, our employees in town, and especially our department heads, don't just punch a clock when they get to work. They, they show up to serve our community. We see this all the time. There's a caring and can-do attitude throughout our departments in town, and uh, we're very blessed to have uh, the people that work for us work for us. Uh, we see it during the tough times mostly, you know, the blizzards, the hurricanes, the power outages. That's when uh, our people step up the most and when they're the most visible. But they're there all the time, doing the right thing, preparing ball fields for the next All-Star game, or uh, sweeping off uh, a particular sidewalk or a walkway uh, entrance to a beach so that, so that we as consumers can use them. There's a whole lot of things happening in East Lyme. I want to start the show with a list of calendar items so that we don't run out of time. And today, later on, we'll talk to Dave Putnam. He's our director of Parks and Rec. Calendars, things that are going on in East Lyme. Every Thursday at 3 o'clock is a farmer's market, and it's a great farmer's market. It's very apropos of our town. It's small, it's tight. There's a dozen tents or so, and everyone's friendly, and it's, it's pretty awesome. It's on Methodist Street. Methodist, Methodist Street um, is um, where the Niantic Bike Shop is, uh, between Hope Street and Main Street. Um, there's parking in the municipal lots around uh, Hope Street uh, or, or out on Main Street. Come find the farmer's market every Thursday, Three o'clock, and I think it goes to like six or so. The VFW, which is down by the entrance of McCook's, is running a car show, an antique car show, every other Monday. Um, so check the calendar, check the board out front, check the website. Every other Monday, they're going to be down there. They're serving sandwiches and drinks, and car show and enth- uh, car antique car enthusiasts are down there. Come on down; it's a fun time, and then go walk the beach. Brian Daigle Golf Tournament, there's a bunch of golf tournaments coming up. Uh, the Brian Daigle Tournament, is um, uh, Memorial Tournament, is July 12th. The next day, the Mike G Memorial Tournament, July 13th. I think both of those are at Cedar Ridge. Correct. And uh, the Football Booster Golf Tournament on July 24th. All these tourna- tournaments help our community or help these memorial funds, and we like your support if you're a business owner or know someone who is or would like to just make a contribution for the for that tournament success feel free to contact me at the town hall and i'll give you the address where you can send a check and make a donation um the rotary club food drive is on august 1st and that'll be done at the vfw uh where we collect money and collect food um right Again, VFW is right above the McCook's entrance. Um, the tr- Niantic, is it a triathlon? The triathlon. I'm glad you're right, here correct. today. Yep. Dave Putnam is here, and he's like, you know, the guy feeding me information <laughs> in my right ear. Niantic uh, triathlon will be on August 2nd, mm-hmm. uh, which is a big day in Niantic, and, um, and we'll hear more about that. And the ProTech is bringing their stage music, uh, stage Back to Life on Main Street. Uh, the music will start uh, pretty soon. It'll be every Friday night. The money, they pass a hat around, and the money goes to music programs in area high schools. I believe East Lyme and, Niant- uh, and, East Lyme and Salem um, benefit, but other communities in our area benefit from uh, ProTex music series. Other notes, the boardwalk construction is progressing. We're shooting for you know, an early October, mid-October opening. It's still, uh, they're out there working every day, pouring concrete, making the forms. It's very deliberate work. It's very slow work. Um, it, because of that, because the construction's going on Monday through Friday, the hole in the wall, the actual hole in the wall under the railroad tracks is closed. So um, the parking lot's there, but you can't really access the beaches from there. The hole in the wall beach is open as well as McCook's beach and uh, what was 
uh, Cheney Park, what was Amtrak Beach. All, th all of our beaches are open, but the access to the hole in the wall is through McCook's, the upper lot of McCook's, um, on Monday through Friday. On Saturdays and Sundays, it's um, good to go, and that's cool. Um, this is the first summer in th over 30 years, over 30 years, where we didn't have a mandatory water uh, conservation order in place. And that's a big deal. We, uh, we have this interconnection water system where we've, we send water to the reservoir and to the, um, the New London water system uh, during the winter months when we have an abundance of water in our wells. And then in the summer, we borrow that money, we take it back, we take the water back, um, the, the same number of gallons, which is about 14 million gallons or so, in the summer months where our wells are running a little dry, sometimes being shut off because a stream uh, flows and the DEEP tells us to shut it off. That's also when our, um, our population doubles in the summer. So um, this is a brilliant idea. Uh, Mr. Formica, my predecessor, um, put this together with a lot of hard work and a lot of determination by a lot of people and a lot of cooperation. So this is the first summer we're enjoying that. Um, so far, we don't have a, a drought in place anyway. Uh, we still might need water restrictions should it become a situation where it gets very, um, very dry. But right now, uh, all systems are go, and I'm um, uh, proud to say that uh, go ahead and water your lawns, wash off your boats, wash your cars off, uh, fill the swimming pools because uh, all that's cool. Don't, don't abuse water. Don't, uh, you know, uh, there's places in our country, in our world, that don't have any water. So we should be mindful and respectful of our natural resources. But uh, by all means, if you need the water, if you need to do a project, it's there for you. There's much that happens in our town. Our 28 departments are always working on projects and improvements. Our town is chock full of dozens of, in dozens of committees and special groups that do so much for our community. The Lions Group, the Rotary Club, Karen Share, the Land Trust, the Public Trust, the Niantic Main Street Group, Elbow, which is the East Line Business Organization, the Three Historic Properties Agricultural Subcommittee. There's so much that goes on in our town. And so many people make up all these committees. Um, each one of these groups has volunteers who pour their passion, their talent, their time, and their other resources to help the organizations sustain and grow and, and help our town be as wonderful as it is. And my hats are always off, my hat's always off to those folks that step up and volunteer and do their do their part. I volunteered for 15 years in this town. I started off as a zoning um, alternate in the elections of two th uh, 1999, and uh, and then became chairperson very quickly after. And have been on. I've been on the board of selectmen now for um, uh, for six years. Five as a deputy first selectman, and this is my first year as first selectman. And it's an honor. This week, um, we're bringing Dave Putnam. To the conversation. Dave Putnam is East Lime's Park and Rec Director. He's been on the job for quite a long time. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate thanks for, it. Thanks for putting up with my monologue. Oh, it's, no it's, uh, it's not a lot of jokes. Yeah, a lot I'm, of not, I'm not a Jim, Jimmy Fallon type. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, here's the, here's the facts. Yeah, a lot of good information there. So it's a lot good. of information. Yeah. I, I think I flew through it, yeah. but uh, we'll recap at the end. Yeah. Dave, tell, welcome. How long have you been on the job? Uh, I've been in East Lime. This is my 11th summer, so 10 and a half years here. 10 and a half years as the Parks and Rec Director? Correct. And, and where were you before that? I was in East Hampton for 12 years as the Park and Rec Director there. And before that, I was in East Lyme as a program coordinator for seven and a half years. So my roots are in East Lyme, and I'm back here and loving every minute of so it. So this, this Park and Rec thing is in your blood. It is, uh, absolutely. This is what you do. Did you go to school for it? I did. I went to Springfield College. Okay, I knew that. Um, I graduated in 1986 with a degree in recreation management and uh, then started working for East Line Park and Rec right after the next 1986. summer. So, 1986. 1986, yeah. So uh, did you have your 50th birthday yet? I did. You did? I did. Thanks I, for bringing that up. Because yeah. <laughs> I graduated in 85, yeah. and so and I had mine a couple of years ago. Yeah. So I figured you were about to. I didn't know we were the same age. I yeah. thought you were 20 years younger than oh, me. Yeah, all the great. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you, you go to school for this. You learn how to be a director and what it means and, and uh, all that's... What, what do you learn as a park and rec director? What do they train you Absolutely. on? Absolutely. You learn budgeting. You learn um, yeah, right. facilities. You learn um, customer service. Um, you know, it just, you know, Springfield College did a real good job of hands-on, um, getting you prepared for life in, in the real world. So 
um, I can't speak highly enough of them, a huge Springfield College. They did a good job. Um, so, so they did a great job. Your, um, I know your dad volunteers for the uh, senior Meals center. On wheels, Meals yeah, on absolutely. wheels. I had the pleasure of driving around with him, and yeah. he gave me a little uh, Dave Putnam <laughs> yeah. history. So, some I'm stuff sure. I did, probably didn't get from you because right. you're such a humble right. guy. Uh, when it, you know, but he's one of those guys who talk about those volunteers that just quietly show up and, and make our community better. Yeah, it's absolutely. awesome. He loves so, it yeah. So, so you're from East Lyme. I am. I, I graduated East Lyme High School in 1982. Oh nice. I started working for the Park and Rec Department when I was 16 years old as a playground counselor and just fell in love with the field and, and the community. and um, Everything's fallen into place for me, so it's really good. Yeah, it sure has. Yeah. It sure, we're lucky to have you. You know, we um, Joe Braga is yeah. from, uh, did you, he's younger Joe's than Joe's younger than I am. Yeah, yeah than yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Joe Braga, um, who is our um, public works director, he's from East Lyme. Our new school superintendent, Jeff Newton, graduated from the high school probably yeah. around your time. Oh, well, no, no, he's much younger. Well, Jeff's younger than me. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I was Jeff's high school basketball coach you know. at East Lyme High School. That's, so it's good to see him come back, and so he's going to do a great job at, for East Lyme schools. You know, I think the conversation great. to have is um, how these three major department heads in town. Jeff Newton, our superintendent, is a department head. The Board of Ed is its own entity. Um, but how these three very key pieces to the puzzle um, are from our town. You know, they get it. They, you, in your marrow is, you know, maroon. Mm, absolutely. Um, is, um, you know, you get what it means to be an East Limer or a Niantic uh, resident. What it, you know, we're, we got a little bit of Yankee in us. We don't like to spend a whole lot of money, yet we do expect first-class services. Uh, and, you know, specifically right. your department delivers these services to our community probably like no other. Right. Well, thank you. Yeah, we take great pride in that in yeah. our athletic fields and our beaches. Um, we want to make sure everything is in top shape as far as our fields are concerned, as far as the cleanliness of the beaches and those kinds of things. Yeah, what, are you, what, are, what are you responsible for? So, oh. you know, tick it off for us. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So we're responsible for all park grounds in the town. So that includes nine baseball fields. That's Veterans Memorial Park. That's Sam Perrette's Park at Brybrook. That's the Little League fields at, uh, behind the middle school. So we're in charge of all of those fields. And then also the McCook, uh, McCook and the Boardwalk and Cheney Park. It's been a, you know, we keep growing our, to our inventory, which is great. And glad to see those opportunities happen. And right. the town's been really good about supporting us in those uh, types of things. So we not only do that, but we also have 60 different program offerings that we offer throughout the year at the, most of them at the community center, some of them at the schools as far as aerobics and, um, you know, those types of exercise and health right. fitness programs. And you know, we're also combined recently with the Youth Services Bureau. And so we're, we're in charge of Youth Services now with our Juvenile Review Board and all the programs that we do there. And so our department the babysitting has, training yeah, that they absolutely. do, yeah, the after-school yeah. programming yeah. that they do. Yep. The Open Center program is a big right. program for middle school kids to come after school. So they're not going home to an empty home and they're coming to to our open center program, which runs all school year. And then once we're out, we're doing outdoor adventure programs. We're, we're trying to keep those kids busy all year round. So we've got a lot on our plate, but- um, you, have you have sports programming too, don't you? Yeah, Not a little just... bit. The sports programs, we're more of provide facilities for them. Right. So they're mostly okay. independent leagues that do that. And then we provide the backbone for okay. the fields and maintaining the grounds for them and stuff. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Do you want some more stuff on your plate? Or? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you bring it on, right? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Uh, and then you you play a major part in Celebrate East Line. Well, our office does, and i got to tell you, Mike McDowell does yes. most of that. He's our special events coordinator, and he handles all the vendors and all the programming for that. But probably four or five years ago, we took that on as part of uh, a responsibility for Park right. and Rec. And so we're looking forward to this coming up for July 18th. It's coming up quickly, and uh, I think our vendors are close to being full on Main Street, so we, which is nice. great. Nice. Um, we'll have a full day there, and then fireworks and sandcastle contest and bands and dunking booth and everything that goes along with that. It's a great day. I hear a lot of our younger people say that's one of their favorite days of it's year. The day. Is, yeah, it's the day. It's the it's it's our it's a it's the town's homecoming day. You know, the high school gets one during the yeah. football season. It's really the town's homecoming day, and it's the perfect time to have it. It's you know, mid-July. It's always yeah. a third, third Saturday third in Saturday, July. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just everybody you know in town is down there. Um, 
if you haven't been down there, come check it out. Uh, July 18th, 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock? Yep, 3 o'clock. Well, Main Street opens at 3 o'clock. Okay. And everything will start Vendors there. open at 3. Vendors open at 3. The Main Street closes at 1.30 so the vendors can come and set right. up. And then the fireworks are at 9, and those are sponsored by Dominion. Um, yes. Which is nice enough to... Oh, yeah, fund the fireworks for us every year. So, uh, and thank you to Dominion. Yeah. They uh, they do, they've stepped up year after year after year after year. Yeah. I don't know how many ten ten years or well, so, this, or uh, more. Uh, I think this is our fifteenth year. Fifteenth year of celebrating yeah. slime. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Dominion steps up and, and, and purchases the fireworks or provides us funds mm -hmm. for the fireworks. Fireworks go off about nine o'clock. There's a band beforehand. Paul Lucier band, Paul which Lucier I know band. you're very familiar with. I'm so. familiar with the Paul Lucier band. Um, um, proud to say I've been playing drums for them for 10 years uh, or, or more because time is flying. Um, so some free, and there's music all over the downtown, uh, yeah. not just my band. I mean, there's uh, the Protect stage is going on. There's another couple of stages. There used to be right. a youth stage, but there's music and there's um, festivities all over town that day. Absolutely. There's something for everybody. Sure. Yeah. What, is, what do you do in the winter? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's the beaches yeah. and the ball fields yeah. and what happens? Well, so our guys spend a tremendous amount of time on going through each piece of our equipment and making sure they're ready to go for the spring because we can't afford to have a down mower or a down infield machine right. or whatever. So we take great pride in going through that, and we've been very lucky. Our guys are very skilled uh, in doing that. We also assist in snow plowing. So our trucks all have plows on it, and we'll go out and we'll help uh, Public Works do that. And then we'll also do our own parking lots, and we're in charge of municipal parking lots, and then also for the emergency uh, buildings, fire departments, police departments. And, right. Uh, in the dispatch center. So our guys are out busy during the winter time. And, uh, you know, as far as us in the office, we're still doing programming. Right. As far as I was concerned. And then we, that's our budget time. It probably so gets even a little bit thicker, in the, in the, you know, as far as your scheduling goes in the winter. I mean, programming wise, I right. mean, there's more indoor activity. Correct. Obviously. Right, right. Um, and it, I'm glad you pointed out the plow thing. Yeah. Um, every available truck in town puts a plow on it and, 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 and is useful to our taxpayers, to our citizens, to the travelers on our road. You know, so the big, the big yellow trucks, the big, uh, you know, all those big tr DPW trucks, they're out there hitting our roads, and there's 112 miles of town road. Um, but there's all these parking lots. The, the school has their own thing going on, but all their municipal parking lots, the town hall, the, the community center, the, right. the, police, the police station, Fire well, the, and yep. then we have municipal parking lots right. all over downtown as well. So, so you guys are out there doing it. You're on call, so when we pat those guys at, um, at Public Works um, on the back for pulling those big, long shifts, yeah. you guys Our, are right, right behind them doing the same thing. Right, and i got a great staff, and yeah. so they're really uh, you know, responsible, and um, they do a good job. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. They do. Um, and this, this winter was proving ground. Uh, we were able to really kind of show off a little bit. Yeah, this yeah. is how good we are. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and every day that I spent at my desk at Town Hall, I got the phone calls, I got the emails, um, you know, uh, people bumping into me just getting lunch or the gro and stop and shop or try town saying, thank you. Tell the guys thank you. Um, so uh, I was trying to encourage people, hey, when you see them at a d coffee shop or, you know, Buy them a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll come up with a program next year oh. where, uh, you know, throw a couple <laughs> dollars in the, in the bin and we'll buy the guys coffee when they're out on their 30-hour shifts. Uh, it would be a good idea. Um, so your staff, how many people work for Parks and Rec? You know, I'm sure the winter staff's smaller than the summer right, staff. Right. Uh, absolutely. So when in the wintertime, we have four full-time maintainers, okay. and they work year-round, obviously. And then we have four full-time people in our office including the um, youth service program director and um, our own program director for Park and Rec. Right. Administrative secretary and administrative assistant. So there's it's pretty lean. full time. Yeah, it's pretty lean. You yeah. guys do a yeah. lot in the office with just four people. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then summertime we ramp up with, uh, yeah. you know, with the addition of the Boardwalk Beach and, um, you know, with all our beaches and stuff. So we're somewhere between program people and beach staff. We're somewhere between 80 and 90 seasonal employees. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of training that's involved there, a lot of liability, a lot of, you know, here's the manual, this is what Absolutely. you got to do, and um, empowering your young staff. Yeah. You know, this, this kid who's in a, in a booth yeah. and is a yeah. gate attendant but has to know all the things to do, right. including emergency services and what happens when you're confronted with an angry person coming <laughs> yeah. in from out-of-state plates, yeah. let's just yeah. say, yeah. Uh, or in-state plates. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the toughest challenge of your job? 
I think right now is staying up with, um, with technology and how we handle that. So part of that is we've, we've, we're going to go to a, what we call web track and so that we'll be able to do web-based program registrations, which is something we've been kind of maybe a little bit behind on, and so we yeah. need to catch up and stay ahead of that uh, thing. So people don't necessarily have to come into our office to register for program. They can do it online with their phones or at their, with their laptops and register for one of our programs. So that has been one of the challenges we see. And then, you know, every day we just need to provide good services for our, for our citizens and right. people that use our parks and right. make sure we're on top of all of our safety regulations. And um, those types of things are a day-to-day. -day, day day-to-day -day and, and ever-increasing, yeah. uh, you know, the, the liability part of uh, the world, you know, mm -hmm. the making sure everything is safe and the equipment mm -hmm. is safe and, um, and uh, even keeping track of legislation. They're talking yeah. about pesticides on ball fields yeah. and, you know, right. major issues. And for some people, you know, passion, passionate issues. Right. Uh, but keeping, uh, keeping abreast, abreast, abreast of all, of all that. Absolutely. It's yeah. very important, yeah. And, and, you know, we use an integrated pest management plan for our, all of our athletic fields. So we're not out just spraying pesticide, right. herbicides. We, we only treat the areas that are affected. Right. And so I think that's a big uh, thing on our part is I have... Our staff is, I have a certified supervisor in pesticide herbicide and also two certified applicators. So I think it's important that they keep their certifications up and that we require them to have their certifications so that we're doing it diligently and not just um, I bet throwing things out there. I bet there's three people in this whole town that knew that. Uh, you know, it's yeah. in this town of 17,000 right, plus right. people that, that you have registered and certified Herbicide, yeah, pesticide, pesticide, and herbicide, a supervisory person, and then two applicators. So, I mean, so it's not just it. cutting the grass. Right. That's it's it. not just exactly. combing the beach. Right, right. Uh, uh, it's not just throwing a, uh, a certified lifeguard up on a chair. Right, correct. There's, a, there's, there's science to all of this. Right, and a lot of training and a lot of, uh, you know, follow-through and paperwork and yeah. all that other stuff that goes into it. Yeah, it's behind the scenes that people don't see. And, um, Amazing, like said, and we have some, and we have some great ball fields in town. Uh, Ed Ball and, yep. and and your and the entire staff. Yep. But you guys won a certification a year ago, um, best field in New right. England or something we're, like well, that. Well, we were one of two in yeah. uh, 2013 Fields of Excellence Award, and the other one went to Stonehill College. Oh, we love Stonehill. <laughs> yeah, that's your <laughs> alma mater. Well, but <laughs> yeah, we we took a lot of pride in that, and uh, yeah. and that we were awarded that, and it was like a, a kind of a validation to our guys. Uh, you know, they're doing a good job, and it was nice for them to be. You know, yeah, it's nice for them to be named to that. Everybody likes a pat on the ba mm -hmm. back, you know. Um, and and they in our in our crew. And I started the show off by talking about people show up not to punch a clock, but they have a lot of pride in their job. Oh, Your crew, especially, right. uh, but no different than any other crew in town. They they show up to serve. They show up to do the best that they can. And we get we see the results. And we're a prideful town. We. We love what we have, right. um, and you know some of it is the nature trails and, and the open space, and you know the, the the beaches and the water. But some of it is you know deliver. It's parks, yeah. and it's pavilions, and it's um, it's ball fields, and um, and um, it all comes together. And you see it all. Ooh, yeah, you yeah. you come. You you are uh, on top of all that. So we appreciate what you yeah, do. What does the future hold for Parks and Rec? What, what is coming up? Right. That, well, we're excited about a couple of projects. The first one is we're almost finished with our uh, gazebo pavilion at Brybrook Park. So in the past, we've had no protection out there from really from sun and then also uh, thunder and lightning storms. So yeah. we have a protection thunder and lightning protection kit on the gazebo. Before, we used to have to pile people into the bathrooms. Now they can mm. uh, go underneath the pavilion there, which is... Uh, you know, much overdue, and that's almost completed. We're excited about working with the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, the East Line Public Trust, and with the town on a potential band shell at McCook Point Park. Um, so it's something that uh, we have a committee that's been formed to look at um, the appropriate location and the appropriate design, and, and that's something we're probably looking at down a year down the road, but something that uh, I think will be a great amenity to Macaw. I see it as being built next summer, probably not taken advantage of until maybe late fall, oh, but, right. but certainly the following summer. Yeah. But a band shell uh, facility and a natural amphitheater. Mm -hmm. There's a little dip in the, um, in the McCook's property as you're heading, as you're walking toward the hole in the wall. Um, there's a little dip. Uh, we wouldn't have to take out any trees. Um, we think we can position a 20 by 40 stage with a little bit of a, uh, a pavilion type roof over the back side of it, over the top, and um, 
and really provide something kind of special. Have um, you know regional theater groups out there, uh, have uh, symphony pop concerts out there, and of course just regular, regular old concert. bands yeah, like, yeah. like I'm used to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what a cool thing. We have so many youth music groups out there too. It would be nice to have mm -hmm. some Battle of the Bands uh, out there. and How wonderful, what a great asset. Right. And you'd be sitting there um, uh, in this beautiful park, which is McCook's, looking over, you, you know, the, the back of the stage, you'd be looking through at um, at the hole in the wall beach and looking over the boardwalk, at the completed boardwalk at that point. So wonderful. We're Something excited about that. To. Absolutely, yeah. So I, those kinds of things keep me uh, keep me going and keep me uh, um, yeah. motivated to keep going. Yeah. That, we talked earlier sense. about uh, dog parks. Yeah. I know, um, you know, it's a controversial issue. It costs some money to put a dog park in. There's some passionate dog owners in our town, and why wouldn't they be? They're part of our families. Um, there's some communities out there. The dog community, the dog owner community, um, is a tight little community. And um, there's a whole lot of towns that put together, you know, set-aside areas. There's a fenced in that are safe for a dog park yeah. um, uh, set up. And, and we're looking into that as well That's as a town. Yeah. And we have to have that discussion. That's part of the show is to bring things to the table and then have discussions about them. Right. And we've had discussions over the past few years about that. And it, it seems to come up every once in a while. And yeah. it's something that we need to take a look at as what would be an appropriate location, you know, appropriate mm -hmm. funding and, uh, yeah. and that kind of thing. And, and doing it start right. moving forward. Doing it right. And doing it right. Absolutely. Having another first class facility yeah. like all yeah. our others. Um, what else? Anything else coming up? Um, you know, we Anything have your CIP that we didn't address. No, you know, the town's on. been really great about supporting yeah. us, and, yeah. and so I can't complain um, as far as that is concerned. But we do have some special events coming up on August seventh through the ninth. We have uh, our East Lime Regional Theater Program, which we sponsor, is doing Suzukul this year, and that'll be at East Lime nice. High School. So we're excited about that. This is our fifth anniversary of having the uh, East Lime Regional Theater Program, so we're excited about. What they're going to do, we, we are going to do summer concerts on Wednesday nights in August, sponsored by the Youth Service Bureau. We do them right on the beach. Um, so those will be on Wednesdays from 6 to 8 o'clock. We have Jeffrey's Rainbow Run, which is a scholarship set up for Jeffrey Borges. Um, and that is a scholarship fund set up for high school seniors. And that's a run that will happen on September 18th. Last year we awarded two $1,500 scholarships to two East Lyme high school graduates that are going to study either working with children or with uh, veterinary type services. So that's an annual scholarship and that's coming up. Um, and then just we're really gearing up for some, I mean, we're July 1st, we're, 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 we're July 1st, it's here and we're, we're managing it the uh, best that we can. So. You know, some, some departments have a, you know, Super Bowl, they have a focus, they have a, you know, some, like Dick Morris, he, he's in charge of our emergency operations mm -hmm. center. He doesn't know when his Super Bowl is going to be, but when that hurricane comes mm -hmm. ripping up the coast or that blizzard, he gears up and man, that, those guys are on top of their mm -hmm. game. You have this.